Hi everyone, I'm Jermaine Sain, and I want to thank you for watching When We Speak. As you know, I don't normally do behind the stage interviews or backstage interviews, but I could not pass up this opportunity. I am backstage with none other than Chrissy Collins. Do you know who that is? Chrissy Collins from The Mamas. Not your mama, not my mama. I'm talking about The Mamas, like Beyonce's The Mamas. And Tyler Perry plays and his movies. So don't you go anywhere. Don't you go anywhere. And thank you so much for supporting When We Speak TV. When We Speak. Chrissy Collins, how are you doing? I'm good, Jimmy. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, especially sitting here talking to you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, no. All jokes aside. All jokes aside. I have wanted to meet you and talk to you for a very long time. Stop it. Yeah, I have. Me? I really. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna tell you. I I told God because I know you're a Christian, of but course. I told God. I said, you know what? I'll know that this is my purpose if I meet certain people. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, you were on that list. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were. <laughs> you were actually on that list. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jermaine, so I'm, I'm, I'm like, like right now, my heart is going. Do, 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 do. Oh, quit. Quit it. <laughs> but let's jump right into it, okay? Let's jump into it, sweetie. So, what made you decide to be an entertainer for your profession? Um, I never wanted to be one. Really? No, I was comfortable being in the background when I was living in New York. I'm originally from Niagara Falls, New York. And we had a family group, a family gospel group. My sister was the lead singer. I was the background singer singing tenor, and I didn't want to do nothing else. I wanted to go to the Air Force. I did. I think I even wanted to be a veterinarian, okay. even though I'm allergic to dogs and cats. But I still <laughs> wanted to be that. Uh -huh. But it wasn't up until maybe about a good nine years ago I decided I really wanted to be an entertainer. After me still doing plays and singing and everything, I just something just hit me. It was like, okay. This is this is what I want to do, and everybody's always said, "Well, you're yeah, a good entertainer. You need to be one." I'm like, mm -hmm. "Too much work. I don't want to do it." Uh -huh. So, <laughs> and it is a lot of work, but I love doing it. I love doing it. Okay. Now we are uh, we are at um, Acoustic Jazz. Yes, we are. And we are here for your performance tonight. Yes, this is my new home. Okay. Acoustic Jazz is now my new home over here on Marietta Street in Atlanta, Georgia, downtown. <laughs> yes, eight four zero Marietta. So, why should everyone experience the Chrissy Collins experience? Ooh, I think the reason is because I'm just as real as they come. You've uh -huh. been to my shows. Right. Um, I have fun. I, there's no holds barred. Mm -hmm. I'm in the audience all the time. I never stay on the stage, as you know. Yes. And um, I love people. So when they come to my show, they're going to feel like they're really part of my family, which they are. And when they leave, they're going to experience that I do a two-hour show nonstop, two hours, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Really, that's how my show is. I don't like taking breaks. I like getting the full... <laughs> concert that you paid for and wanting more from me. So it's, I, I do a little bit of everything. So I think when you come to my show, you're going to feel love. You're going to feel a lot of love. Because I know from personal experience that you like audience participation. I love it. And you know, last show you brought the microphone and put it in my mouth. I did. And I was so nervous. I, know. I didn't know what to do. I was like, how you doing? <laughs> like, she is not, she is not going to get me to sing. No. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to put all these singers. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all about having fun. It's uh, all about breaking you, getting you out of your, your box that you're in and coming out and just having a good time. That's what it's all about. Everybody kept telling me, like, Jermaine, I can't believe you did not sing. And I was like, oh, no. That place is probably filled with singers. No, nothing in there. And enough. what perfect opportunity did you have to go ahead and show what else that you got that, that God gave you than go out there and just sing? Because you never know who's in the audience. You never know. And that could be your next big break. So never turn it down. Don't you do it again. Just don't do it tonight, okay? I am. <laughs> I can't, can't make no promises. <laughs> can't make no promises. <laughs> background you 
well, you have sang background for a lot of people. Yes. Uh, Beyonce being the one of the most notable mm -hmm. people that you sang background with. Still with. Right. Right. Um, what do you think that it takes to to um, I guess make the perfect blend of a, of vocals when it comes to background? Oh, it's so hard because. Everybody can sing. Well, there's a lot of singers out there, but really there's not enough people that can blend or that can listen and have that ear to listen to the next person next to them. So it takes a person who has a good ear and that can match their tones and their vibratos together with the next person that's next to them and know when to sing airy and know when to sing full and know when to just back off a little bit because most of you, I mean, for me, the perfect blend, I look for when I put big backgrounds together for artists is someone who's very airy, someone who's strong, and someone who has a good mix. And that's, that's, that, to me, is a perfect blend because when it comes to the stuff that's in unison, they're able to sound like one. And then when they break away, they still have that oneness, but it has the tones and the same, like, you know, mixes that they have together. So that's one thing that is, to me, that I look for when I'm looking for singers, yeah, and the look. So how important is... Um like the riffs and the runs. Like, for example, it's me. It's cheating. Really? Yes. Because for me, I used to always feel bad. I'm like, okay, I can do a few, but I'm not all that great. But I feel like I have a great smooth tone, but I'm not the riffs and runs. But you know what? Uh, honesty, smooth tones and not doing so many riffs will get you a lot further than the ones who do a lot of riffs. Because to me, you're not able to really hear the voice. You're not really to hear what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I use this example always. Look at Brandy. Brandy can run, but she makes a run count. Right. She doesn't do it everywhere, and that is important. When you do a run, make it count. If you can't do a run, don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. Let the smoothness take over. Because if you got that smoothness, and if you have, along with that smoothness, you have that type of um, look mm -hmm. and that that thing that can bring like people me. in. Yeah, like me. Like well, I got that. You got that look, boo boo. <laughs> it's all over you. It's just all open. I'm curious about how both of them came about. Actually, okay. you know, I'm like, for me, I'll just say for me, before uh -huh. I moved to Atlanta mm -hmm. was when I found out who you were. But it was like, all of a sudden, you just popped up out of nowhere. And I was at a Beyonce concert. <laughs> and she said, Christy Collins from Atlanta. Atlanta's on Christy Collins, who's the I Am Tour. Yeah, and no. I'm like, yeah. I didn't know she did that yes, too. Yes, yes. So how did all that come about? Okay, which one you want to play or you want to, uh, Beyonce first? Okay. You don't matter with the play, <laughs> it's so funny. The play, let me tell you something, God is so good mm -hmm. because you never know what you're going to walk into when you go to somewhere. I was singing in a choir called B. Chase Williams and Shabbat, and um, I was with him, and a producer, a director, but you came to the play, I mean, to the show, to the, uh, we did a concert or something. Okay. And he came to me, he heard me sing, he said, um, would you like to be in the play? And I was like, sure, whatever, yeah. He's like, I had a couple of roles that would be good for you. But then we started talking. He's like, yo, there's so many roles I think that you would be good in. And I was like, okay, because I'm always, I'm a character. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. And so I read for it and did A Good Man is Hard to Find, mm -hmm. part two. And, and, and here's the kicker. The director of the play was Dwayne Woods. Really? Let go and let God. Yes. Uh -huh. So I've been knowing him for so long. Oh. So he got me into the industry of doing plays. And I've done plays now for like two 19, 20 years? Really? Yeah. Wow. I, did, I started with the Chitlin Circuit and everything and just did little plays here on the road. And then that's what led me um, when I was singing with Kelly Price. Uh -huh. That's how I met Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Uh -huh. And he was getting ready to do Why Did I Get Married? But at the time it was called He Proposed to Me. Mm -hmm. So I was with her for a, a brief time. And um, 
then I saw him and I became friends with him and he was just we were talking, talking past him and everything like that and then I was at we was at Apache one night. Uh -huh. Again, you never know right. who's going to be wherever you are. Exactly. Anyway, so <laughs> we was talking and um told me to come to the car, gave me, he gave me his number, I got his number. He said, he said, he said, he said there was something that he wanted me to do. Now I thought he just wanted me to do background, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that he was watching me for nine years before he even talked to me. And then what happened, ain't that a while? <laughs> I was wild when he yeah. told me. And what happened was he um, said, I want you to play this role. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. I'm not just <laughs> I, get to, I get to get on stage. And uh -huh. So when I read the character, I was like, for real? Chico? Yeah. But you know what? I'm for gonna real? Tell you, you told that thing up. I mean, I had to do research, really research mm -hmm. on how to become hard and, uh -huh. and, and less feminine when I'm a, I'm a girly girl. So, you know. He, he, trying to, he trying to put you up and all that stuff. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, yeah, he beat me up every night. And then, yes, <laughs> I had black and, mark, black and blue marks to show for it because uh -huh. he don't play, but we played, you know, and it was a good one. And then we was at the Kodak Theater in L.A. And I did Yes, She Just Loves Me. And the creative director for Beyonce was in the audience. She came backstage. She knew our road manager. And she said, well, if you get your first CD, I want the first bootleg copy. Me and her became good friends. Again, sidebar note to everybody out there. When you meet somebody who's a star or they come into your world, know this. They already know about you. You ain't got to flaunt it. When they're ready for you, they will ask for you. Okay? True for real, because I became friends with her. Me and her became friends, talked on the phone all the time and everything. Then she worked on my project, Faith in Progress. She's the one who helped me with that. And when the play was over with, I called her, check, checked on her because she's diabetic, so I make sure I'm a friend. When I'm a friend, I'm a friend. So I checked on her and um, she was like, I'm trying to get background series for thee for this event and da, da, da. And she said, oh, wait a minute, you home, right? I said, yeah, I just got home. She was like, yeah, I need you to go. And I was like, yeah, right. I never believe nobody. I'm like, sure, uh -huh. whatever. Sure, I'll do it. Until it happens. Like, it ain't like, going to yeah. call me. Then she said, yeah, the role manager going to call you. Yeah, whatever. Role manager called. Still didn't believe it. Uh -huh. And then it was like, yeah, you leaving tomorrow. And we need you to be Yes, this is all happened like in two days. Like wow. one day to call, next day I was gone. And that's how I got the gig with Beyonce. I did one gig with her. And the way that I am with you is the way that I am with her. Uh -huh. So she thinks I'm kind of crazy. So, <laughs> but she loves it. You right. know, I'm just me. I, I'm not putting on a facade or anything. So it was, that's what it was. And then um, after that, we, after that show, that's before she got the all girl band, I was in there with the guys. And she said, they came to me and said, yo, B said she wants you back. She loves mm -hmm. you. And she, I think what got it was still, I never auditioned. But what sealed the deal was when I had to introduce the band. Uh -huh. And I'm so theatrical. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm so theatrical. So <laughs> I um I gave all of them a nickname so I can remember who they were. Okay. <laughs> but then when I got on stage, I, they was getting ready to turn the fans off. And I was like, no, no, keep the fans going. I need my fans. I need my fans. And so I was dancing around the stage, dancing with the musicians. And I saw Jay and B on the side oh. laughing at me. And they was like... <laughs> She is something special, there's something wrong with her, and I've been with her forever since. I've been with her now for eight years. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That is an amazing story. Isn't it, though? Because All of them, what, that's the thing, let me say something. Mm -hmm. When you do a gig, it's supposed to open up another gig for you. Mm -hmm. So each show or each thing that you're being part of is supposed to open up something, something bigger. Mm -hmm. That is if you put it right, and if you put God first in it, he'll make, he'll line everything up. And that's exactly what he did. He lined everything up. I couldn't be more happy. Well, Chrissy, I've enjoyed sitting here talking to you. I have too. And I don't want to hold up more of your time, but I do have one more question before one you. One more. Okay? One more question. One more. If, okay, as singers, mm -hmm. we've always been taught that our voice is our instrument. Yes. So, what I would like to know from you is that what physical instrument would your voice be in a vocal center? And why? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what would my voice be? What instrument would it be? Mm -hmm. mm. I would have to say, ooh, a saxophone. Really? Yeah. Wow, and then if it would, if it if it's in the brass section of saxophone, I love violin. Violin would be another one because uh -huh. I like how smooth and chilling it is. Okay. Um, but I would say sax. Okay. Because. 
I'm a jazz girl at heart. So all those notes and everything that I want to hear, I can hear it. You know, my voice. I try to transform it sometimes to be one. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, Chrissy, that's all our time. But yeah. I love you so much. I really, really do. I've been wanting to meet you for so long. Oh, so it's so like it's like a dream come true. When we